I wanted to be like my father. I wanted to have a nice car like he had, a private jet to, to fly on when we went on vacation. I wanted to be able to bless people like he did. I wanted to be respected like he was. Uh, I saw my father occasionally. He was busy building waste management at the time. His life was uh, filled with hard work, with travel, with interesting people. He had a certain amount of power. It was a life that, that seemed exciting to me. I made an incredible amount of money working with Wayne Senior there. I began to have wealth to fly, to have a nice sport fishing yacht, to live in a big home, to have an incredible amount of disposable income. We owned three sports teams. We drank, we drank in excess, we went to the kind of clubs that you didn't tell your mother that you went to. I commanded an audience. I said whatever came to my mind, whether it was to you or to your wife, self-focused. Do what I want, and I'm gonna please me, no matter what that means. That was my life, an incredible banquet of all the things that the world had to offer, but just never getting full, never being satisfied, never being able to push away and say, okay, that's enough. Suddenly I was lost, happy, but unfulfilled. Something was missing. I got a call from a couple friends and they said, hey, Junior, we got a chance to go on a nuclear submarine for three days and cruise from South Carolina to Florida. Do you want to go? I said, done, we're there, we'll take our plane. And I was introduced to Captain Brad Fleetwood McDonald. We became incredible friends. He took me on his submarine, so I started taking him out of my fishing boat and I began to ask him questions about leadership. I thought, who better? than a man that commands 120 gentlemen underneath the ocean for six months at a time. And every time I asked him about leadership, he had his Bible. And he had this incredible peace about him that was unlike any that I'd ever seen in all the people that I had met through Wayne Sr. And one day I got up my courage and I asked him, I said, you Captain Brad, why are we so different? Junior, he said, you have a hole in your heart. It's consuming everything that you're trying to put in. Everything you do is trying to fill that hole. And the only way you're going to fill that hole is with the relationship with God. I thought, could that be it? Could it be that easy? All these things that I've been chasing, all these places that I'm going, a relationship with God. Well, I went home and I tried to find a church. The pastor gave an incredible sermon, and at the end, before he closed, said, Do you think that there's a reason that God allowed you to be born? Do you think that He has a plan for your life? I felt like He was talking right at me instead of the 4,000 people that were there. I stood up out of my chair like I was launched out by springs, and I can still hear this voice inside of me that said, Junior, sit down, you look so silly. But there was no way. I made my way to the, down the road to the aisle and forward to the front of this church that I'd never been to before, and I fell to my knees. And I began to cry. cried and I listened to that pastor and he said repeat the simple words and ask Jesus into your heart and I did I told Jesus that I was sorry that I loved him and that I wanted to know what this plan for my life was I wanted to be in this personal relationship with him if he wanted to be in it with me it's power not Junior's power but God's power the Holy Spirit's power the power to change. I went home and I tried to explain to my wife what happened. 
She looked at me and she said, I don't know what happened, but I'm worried. She told me at one point that I'd been abducted by aliens. I didn't know what to tell her. All I knew is that I was indeed a different person. Success for me is that one day when I die and I see Jesus, that he'll look at me and say, well done, my good and faithful son. I've been given such a gift based on the life that I lived, a second chance, a chance to follow Jesus, to go to heaven, to live an eternal life. And I know for certainty that I'm going to live in heaven. My father is the kind of individual that keeps his feelings very close, but I wasn't sure that he had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I got up the courage finally to lean over to my father and to ask him, Hey Dad, have you ever prayed a prayer like that and asked Jesus into your heart? Yeah, I have. Success is knowing that those that you love will make heaven. That's true success. I'm Wayne Heisinger Jr. and I am second.